Monica Swanson. Welcome back to the sisterhood. Well, aloha. Great to be here. (laughs) We love having you here and we just love any time we get with you because we love you. And, and of course on the raising boys series, we have to have you because you are Mm. the raising boys mama. So why don't you tell people, um, just a little about your life who didn't catch our other interview with you? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I am talking to you here from the North shore of Oahu in Hawaii, where my husband and I have been for over 20 years now, but we come from the Pacific Northwest and I was raised with older brothers only. Then we got married and we've had four boys. And so I just have kind of fallen into the boy mom place in life and feel like I was kind of meant to be here. Um, My oldest two boys are in college together at Westmont College in Santa Barbara. And then I have a senior about to graduate from homeschool high school and an 11 year old who I homeschool sixth grade. So yeah, I divide my time between all my online stuff, writing, course creation, podcasting, the boy mom podcast, and um, being a mom. And we're a big surf family. My third son is a professional surfer at this point and going to do online college while he surfs around the world. And then my 11 year old is uh, like some of Krista's kids. He's a (laughs) golfer trying to uh, make his way in the world of golf and has his eyes on the big time, but he's just 11. So we'll see. <laughs> yes. I know. I love that we're fellow golf moms. Cause you just yeah. don't meet that many. There's just not no. that many of us out there. No. And I have a lot to learn. I, this is all new territory for me. So mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a pretty place to be, which is very nice. Um, if yeah. you're going to be a spectator of a sport, <laughs> golf courses yeah. are nice. So that, we are. have that going for us. It is lovely. Well, Monica, you are someone who talks a lot about character. You even have a course about how we create character in our children and in our boys specifically, but let's pull back and really just talk big picture of what is character and why is it so important as we're raising our kids to communicate about character? Yes, that is such a good question. And you know, I, I started really diving into this topic when I wrote my book, Boy Mom, because I had a chapter in the book about character. And that was a question I had to ask. I'm like, what is character? It's one of those words we moms talk about. We use a lot. We're like, oh, I want my son or daughter to have character, but what does that really mean? And I think it means probably different things to different people, but we know it when we see it, right? And I tell the story of back when my husband and I, before we had kids and we did youth ministry and I was uh, teaching in a public school in Oregon and how certain kids, you would meet them and you're just talking to them and you're kind of staring at them thinking, I need to meet this kid's parents because there's just something excellent about them. There's something about the way they communicate. They give you eye contact. Maybe they shake your hand. Uh, You see them interacting with other people and you're like, there is something special there. And oftentimes, the first thing we think is we want to meet their parents because we're like, somebody did something right. And when I have kids one day, I want them to be like that kid. And so I think the wheels were turning way back before I had kids as I was like, that's just special. And, you know, we all want our kids to do great things and we hope they grow up to be successful and have a great marriage and do all those things. But really deep down, I think most of us really want to raise kids of character who are loyal and who are kind and who are honest. And I think when you have those individual character qualities, it's pretty guaranteed you're gonna have a better life. Now that's that's not necessarily the motivation. We'll talk maybe more about motivation, but it's a better life. God created us to be drawn to godly character qualities. And though we have this sin nature that pulls us away from those and, and it's not natural. And so that's why as parents, I think it's so important that we really begin to get intentional about uh, both teaching character, but also inspiring it because eventually our kids have to choose for themselves if they want to be character rich people, if they want to embrace character or not. So um, character is a whole bunch of things. It's not one thing. Uh, I, I have always liked the 
the definition of character that says character is um, doing the right thing when no one's watching. And so ultimately, I think that's my greatest goal is to have kids whose hearts desire character. But yeah, there's a whole lot in that big picture of what character is. Yeah, and I, I think it's, as we look at this idea of character, it can be easy for us to say perfection, you know, in the mm-hmm. same sentence, mm-hmm. like, well, if someone has flawless character, then they're kind of perfect across the board, mm-hmm. but that's not the message that we're talking about. And that's not what we're saying that yeah. there's room for failure. There's room for mistakes. Um, there's room to grow because every child is on a journey and mm-hmm. in order for them to grow into who they're going to become, often that includes mistakes and oh, yes. lapses in character. Mm-hmm. And so I just want parents to make sure they're hearing that too, of, you know, this is, we want to teach them about character, knowing that there's lapses in character along the way. And that, and, and for our kids to really know and not be shamed by that, but know that this is a part of the journey of parenting, you know, know, their journey, um, for the parent and the child, you know, both. Yes. But as we're looking at this idea of character, um, what are some ways, Monica, that you have talked about character with your kids and inspire, you said the word, I want to inspire them to character. What does that look like? Yes. Well, I think when kids are young, it's one thing. And then as they get older, it's going to change when they're young. I think a lot of character is just teaching them individual character qualities, which can sound kind of, kind of boring or, you know, you're like, well, how can we do this? And so there's so much you can find out there about those early years, but, you know, teaching a word like, what is kindness? I mean, we shouldn't assume that our toddler knows what it means to be kind. So we teach them the word. Maybe we read them a story. Maybe we give them a Bible verse or a Bible story that focuses on kindness and then looking for opportunities throughout the day to call it out and be like, that was so kind, you know, instead of It's easy to just use generic terms like, oh, good job, or don't do that. But what if we say that wasn't kind? And then they're connecting what you talked about earlier with that idea of kindness. And, you know, same thing with all the other character qualities, honesty, courage, you know, loyalty, all the different things that we want to teach. And we can focus on them one at a time. So when they're little, I think a lot of it is just using what I call character words and bringing them into the day, both in correction and in encouragement. Um, But then as they get older, I think that, again, using the words, talking about them, and then just modeling is so important and just comes right down to how we're living our life and are we living the character qualities that we're teaching them. So it's a big conversation, but I think just talking straight forward, naming the quality that we want them to work on, if we see something lacking, we talk about what that is and why that matters and how that will affect them in their future, really trying to connect the dots between what they do today and who they're becoming and how that will affect them. And I think that's probably the key as they're growing up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you have a a culture of honesty in your home, your -hmm. children as they grow will start to call out the character inconsistencies in your parenting and what you're- (laughs) Oh, yes. Yeah, mom, you're not- showing Mm -hmm. this trait that you always say that you want me to demonstrate. And I think, I think having that, that humility and that honesty and saying, you're right. That wasn't, Mm -hmm. um, a virtue that I am trying to encourage you to demonstrate in your own life. And you're right. That wasn't okay. Yes. And I think that's a, a huge part of this is even what Krista was just saying a moment ago, we're, we're not talking about perfection, but what do we do when we make a mistake and mm-hmm. how do we recover? How do we walk through that owning it in humility? And then that is modeling such important things to our kids who are also going to make mistakes and how are they going to recover? How are they going to deal with it when they fall? We want them to get back up and keep moving. So that's a big mm-hmm. important point. What encouragement would you have, Monica, for maybe their kids are in a spot where they're not showing a lot of character Mm -hmm. and they don't really want to, what, Mm -hmm. I guess, what would be your, your encouragement for that, 
person. Yeah. Well, the three of us had a brief chat before we hit record here and, and we're talking about that beautiful thing that our kids have free will <laughs> and, um, and it can be challenging. That's what's tough about this is that it's not something you can force. And I, I quote uh, James Lehman in my book where he says, you know, you, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. And in the same way, we can lead our kids to things. We, we can't make them drink, but we can make them thirsty. And that's where I use that word inspire. And so I really think that kids hit a certain age where mom and dad just aren't enough. Um, we're, we're still going to be important. I think parents play a, such an important role in their kids' lives all the way till they're grown adults. But I really lean into the other influences in their lives when they hit that, those tween and teenage years, especially where they need some really good role models. They need to be inspired to have character by somebody other than mom and dad. And that's where I love to find a good youth group, um, find people online who are inspiring, who do good things, find good books. Uh, they need to see what good character looks like in somebody they really look up to and want to be like. So I think finding good influences is a huge key to this. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Just as being someone who's parenting teenagers, they need to have people outside of the family who they can look to for that. Mm -hmm. What about some resources? Like, do you have any books you use, um, that you have the kids read or that you read out of, do you have any even podcasts or anything that would kind of lean, help people lean toward that inspiration? Oh goodness. Yes. And so many that it's going to be hard to think of one. I, I will say that on this topic of, of influence and role models, what really helped me understand this better was when we went through a rough patch with one of my sons and, you know, you teach your kids everything when they're young and you feel like they're doing pretty well. And then oftentimes they do hit those tween or teenage years. And it was when my, one of my sons was a young teenager that I was like, who are you? Like, we've taught you everything. Things are going well. And all of a sudden, you know, thankfully it wasn't anything extreme. He wasn't being super rebellious, but he just had this critical spirit. He was um, just being really judgy to family members. And I would say, you know, he walked in a room and it was like this dark cloud walked in with him and we would all be like, here we go. Who's he going to criticize now? And so we were frustrated and we talked to him and it felt like, things weren't changing. And my husband and I were praying and like, we don't even want to be around this kid. Like this is rough and we homeschool. So we have to be around him. And um, so this, this inspired something that I did. It was right at the beginning of a new year. And I had been praying and really getting, feeling like, you know, I'd tried everything. And I started something that for lack of a better idea, I called it character training. And all it was, was I've grabbed this list of things at the time they weren't probably that great because it was like podcasts that I listened to a couple websites pulled a couple books off the shelf I knew about a TED talk or two and I wrote this list and I handed it to that list to my son with a blank journal and I said guess what buddy you have something new I'm assigning you every day in addition to your schoolwork in addition to chores and your daily devotions I want you to spend 30 minutes a day character training and he's like what you know and of course the first <laughs> question well are my brothers doing it I'm like, uh -huh. sorry, no, this is actually about you right now. You don't worry about them. And so every day the, the challenge was he would spend 30 minutes either reading, listening to, or somehow engaged with somebody that would inspire him. And then in that journal, his job was to write the date, whatever he did, and at least one nugget, just write down one thing you got from it. And of course he was resistant at first because he didn't like being told what to do, but he did it. And I would check in every day. And I said, this isn't a journal like where you write all your feelings. Like, this is a journal I'm going to check. This isn't private. And the first few days he wrote like the one nugget. But after a couple of weeks, I found that that journal had sometimes pages. He was actually engaging and he was finding so many, you know, inspiring people and stories. And pretty soon a month goes by and he's got note cards hanging above his desk with Bible verses or quotes. And I can't say we were perfectly consistent. I know we weren't, but over that next six months, I watched this son really transform before my eyes where he would walk in the room and instead of being like quick to be critical, you would see him stop and think before he spoke. You would see him like something was coming back to him that he had heard or learned. And so I called that character training and 
I do believe it was those resources. Now, over time, that list grew. It got much better because I was like, okay, this is working. I need to give them better things. And so that was really the heart behind the character training course that I created because I wanted to put together a really good list, but I didn't want to just put it out there. I wanted to give people, you know, the foundation of character and all the other things we were doing that made that so effective. So I would say for parents, there's some good resources. There's some good books uh, for kids. It's going to be about finding, you know, again, there's there's some TED Talks, there's some YouTube channels, there's people out there. Um, my 18-year-old my now follows, you know, people, athletes who have great character. And some of that is just checking out their Instagram feed. And, you know, there's people who can really set a great example that I point them to. Um, but there's, of course, a full list in the character training course of different resources you can turn to. But yeah, there's a lot out there if you're looking for it. Yeah. And I, I really like that you're mentioning things that aren't total all faith-based because some kids, depending on where they are on that journey, Mm -hmm. especially in the older teen years, if you push too hard, that may be Mm -hmm. a tough, Mm -hmm. like then that introduces a tension there and that power Mm -hmm. dynamic of, Mm -hmm. you know, that I really don't want you to be listening to faith things right now, but you're trying to push it on me. So, I mean, but it doesn't have to be I mean, no. we can pray that our kids would be open, but I really like that you said too, there's other ways to do that too. Inspiring mm-hmm. athletes, different mm-hmm. Ted talks that you can expose mm-hmm. them to. It just takes some legwork to come up with those, but that yes. could even be a part of your rhythm as a family that you mm-hmm. watch inspiring things, or even people, speakers who have some kind of disability and mm-hmm. talk about overcoming and the character mm-hmm. that comes from things like that. I mean, there's so many things that we could do. Mm-hmm. to kind of get our kids in that mindset space that we would want them to be in. Yes, definitely. And I'll, I'll give you a link to something I have on my website that is uh, a list of character inspiring movies, books, Bible verses, and quotes. And, you know, I think there's so many great sports movies out there that just really exemplify great character. And we love to watch those as a family. And then the key is whatever it is you're doing, talk about it afterwards. Don't just throw it out there, but have a conversation and highlight what it is that made that athlete so great and how we can apply that to our own lives. And I think, like you said, that's a great family, um, you know, something the family can take on together. Mm -hmm. And we just watched coach Carter the other day. Again, it's like one of my favorite movies. I love it. It's about this, this guy who is, he's a, he's a high school basketball coach and he comes in to this rough school. And it's just like, there is a new sheriff in town, you know, and he just, he's really hard on the boys at first. And, but it's just kind of the journey of what happens Mm -hmm. when they start to kind of come under his tutelage and Mm -hmm. actually do what he's asking them to do. And it is so inspiring. I am, I am all about Coach Carter. I'm all about Coach Carter. I love it. Yeah. So good. I I haven't seen it. One of the things that I think anyone also who follows you knows is that your boys have really created a sense of community amongst themselves. That's apart (laughs) from you and your husband. How have you cultivated, cultivated sibling relationships with your boys? Mm -hmm. And they are different than girls. Girls Mm -hmm. interact in a certain way and maybe they connect through you know, sharing clothes and curling irons and make, I'm I'm generalizing, but you know, like that, that (laughs) is a way they, or they share toys growing up, but boys are a little bit different. So how have Uh, you cultivated those relationships? Yes. Such a good question. And I wish for all these things that there was a formula, (laughs) but there's just not. And I'm sure that some people would say, I did everything you did. And my kids just don't love each other or don't get along. Um, I think it's fair to open with saying, my boys have fought plenty. They still to this day have plenty of friction in moments. They're not like perfect angels that are always kumbayaing and, you know, they're, they're normal, they're human, but they are, I think they'd all call each other best friends, even the 11 year old with the 22 and 20 year old. I usually say that a lot of it, I believe, is time together. And there is that homeschool benefit of they've spent most of their days in the same house together. So there's just kind of that side benefit to that. We live out in the country. We don't 
live in a neighborhood where they can run outside and just find a friend anytime. So they've kind of just been forced to be together. And I think when you have a lot of time together, though you may fight, you're going to end up having to figure out how to get along. So time together is huge. Uh, I also really worked hard when they were young on trying to just nip it in the bud if I saw a critical spirit coming up. I think there was a time where my oldest son was really annoyed by his younger brother and kind of was using some words that weren't kind. And I just was like, buddy, you need to understand that the way you treat him is really going to shape who he is, to, you know, as much as or in some ways more than his own parents, like the way you treat him, you have a big role to play. And I, I know some people say, oh, you don't want to put that pressure on the sibling, but I felt like it was, it was necessary. And so I just let him know that, that this was a big responsibility. There's blessings to being the oldest, but there's also a responsibility there. So you need to rise up and I'm going to give some consequences if I hear you speaking that way or putting him down. And I think that helped him rise up and own that. There was just a standard there that he rose up to. And then, yeah, just staying on your game. I mean, my boys fight. I don't get involved. I, I let them work things out as much as I can and then get involved where I need to. I try to be the referee or the coach occasionally. But I'm a big believer in letting kids kind of figure out how to work things out and only stepping in when necessary. So, so far, so good. Uh, again, no formula, but definitely time together is the biggest thing I would say uh, helps form relationships. Yeah, there was a time when one of my sons was just not, you know, you know how there's, especially with four mm. and they would dip in and out of who it was, but there were two of them that kind of were rubbing each other the wrong way at any given time. And it was mm -hmm. switch who those two were, but mm -hmm. for whatever season they were in, they were just kind of up against each other. And, and for two of my kids in this one season, they were just struggling. You know, the younger one was bugging the older one. The younger one felt rejected by the older one. Mm -hmm. All right. That whole dynamic. Oh yes. And one of my sons went to camp and I'm such a proponent of church camp, man. If you can get your kids to young life camp, church camp, go to camp, send them to camp yes. because yes. it does something. It really does. Mm -hmm. It meets them differently. Mm -hmm. And I when that son came back from camp, he, the one thing he really took away that, that summer was a changed attitude toward his brother Ooh. and the transformation that occurred in my younger son, because of that was wow. life changing. I'm not mm. over exaggerating. It mm. was life changing his brother breathing life instead of death yeah. into him mm. changed everything about his life. Mm. It was so powerful. And that is the power of a brother. Mm -hmm. That is the power of a brother. Mm. And we can try and cast that vision and help them and give them consequences. Like you said, if they don't do that, mm -hmm. but ultimately they have to, at some point be inspired to be their yes. brother's keeper. And yes. when it happens, it is life-changing for both mm. of them. And now mm. to this day, they are best. I mean, they are mm. best friends oh, and he is it. his brother's protector. He will always mm. be. I truly think he will always be. So oh, it's just worth it. It is yeah. worth it. So yeah. worth it. It is. And I think having those conversations, some parents don't think the kids will understand it, but I'm like, no, I actually think they do. I mean, Probably when I had that talk with my oldest son, he was early elementary and I just was like, this is a role you're going to need to play and it's going to matter. It's going to make a big difference. So I love that story. And mm -hmm. I agree. Camps are the best. They, yeah, they really are. And it's worth it. I mean, they're usually in all areas. So, yeah. you know, just get on the, get on the internet and do some research. <laughs> yes. So Monica, as we're talking about raising sons, if you had to say there were three uh, keys and I know that's hard because there's a lot of yeah. keys to raising. Yeah. I mean, it's complicated and there's a yeah. lot to it, but mm -hmm. if you had to kind of distill it down to three key things, what would mm -hmm. you say are the keys mm -hmm. to raising sons? I love this question. Uh, when I was working on boy mom, we had good friends who are missionaries, uh, in town and they were like, well, your book's not done yet, but our son is getting older. We need to know what are the three things? I was like, that's not fair. There's 12 chapters in my book. How can I come up with three? But the three I named then, and I've thought through this many times since, um, the first thing 
is I just think if we can uh, help our kids understand God's love and really help them develop a relationship with Jesus at a young age, that's going to be the key to everything. I mean, when it comes to character, I often say behavior is important and we want kids who know how to behave well, but ultimately a, a heart that really embraces character is going to be a heart that wants to honor God and a heart that really wants to please their heavenly father, not please men. And that's going to change everything. Fruit grows from the inside out. And so, you know, they will know you by your fruit. And I think that there's just something to be said for a child who loves God and knows God's love for them. There's going to be a lot less work for us to do as parents. So number one thing I focus on with my boys is just helping them understand the gospel message and God's love for them and how they can respond in love to him. And I think that that has been the greatest motivation. My oldest son has said before, mom, it wasn't you and dad that made me want great character growing up. It, I knew God was watching. I knew God could see me and I wanted so much to please him. And so I do think a relationship with God is the first thing I'd say always. Second, and it really goes hand in hand with that is identity. I think that identity is such a tough thing, especially in the world today. Growing up, there's just so many messages to our kids trying to put labels on them and tell them who they are and why they matter and how many likes or follows they have. And are they getting you know high enough test scores or are they making the team? And ultimately, all those things are going to come and go and none of them will last. And so just helping uh, my sons understand, again, who they are in Christ, that God loves them, and that's what gives them value, that that'll never change no matter what they do. And so just having a secure identity is is such a grounding thing. When when kids know who they are and that nothing can change that, they're just going to be have such an easier time in life. And then the third thing that we kind of touched on already is influence. I think the influences in our kids' lives are so important for the better or the worse. I think that we need to be on our game, being really careful. And, and I'm not a helicopter parent. I mean, you know me, my son surfs big waves. I send them out to do crazy things, but I am such a believer in guarding their little hearts when it comes to influences. And influences come in the way of their peers, their friends, online influences, all the things that they do on a screen. And uh, it, in the early years, I think we need to have a lot of conversations, do a lot of coaching, protect them in the way of having filters on computers and knowing what they're doing online and also coaching them, them in their friendships, teach them what does a good friend look like? They're, a good friend you know, will never drag you down and a good friend won't put you down. A good friend won't uh, try to get you to do something that you know is wrong. And so really coaching them and what a good friend is. And, um, and then as they grow up, though we can't control them, just really coaching and mentoring them through all of the things. And I think so often parents think, oh, my teenager doesn't want to hear from me. They, they don't want me telling them what to do. I think they're listening more than we think. So I think speaking into their life, you want that healthy relationship. So you've got to balance that with having fun and being, being, you know, a parent that they enjoy being around, but then go ahead and, and speak up. They're listening more than we think they are. So yeah, faith, identity, and influence are, are my top three. Thank you, Monica. Those are, those are so good. And any parent can look at those and say, yeah, I mean, key, they're key. I, I was in the third one influence. I always go back to that story from Atomic Habits that James Clear talks about. Um, have you read that book? I love that book. Yes. Okay. And um, about, so maybe you can help me remind me of the specifics yeah. of the story, but basically there were so many men doing a certain number of drugs in Vietnam. Oh yeah. Do you remember that story? It's been a while. I do, but it's been a while since I read it. So I think it was like cocaine. I mean, it was something, yeah. it was a heavy drug. Mm -hmm. It was no mm -hmm. like small drug. Yeah. It was heavy, yeah. addictive. And yet when they came back, they found that only a small percentage of those, that, that group actually had drug addiction. That as soon as they were removed from that environment, they literally stopped mm -hmm. cold Turkey because it was tied to the environment. Wow. Mm -hmm. So James Clear in Atomic Habits, Habits, he really is big on influence. And he really mm -hmm. talks about how 
you build your habits, which is your life. You build your, your entire life based on these habits that are often a result of influence, positive or negative. Yes. Yes. So it is fascinating. And he's a secular writer. He's not a faith writer. Mm -hmm. He's in the secular space. And so it is interesting to just kind of look at that Mm -hmm. and consider that and think, Mm -hmm. okay, so what do I, what do I need to do differently to help, to help surround my kids? Not that again, like they have agency and they're going to make their own Mm -hmm. choices, but how we don't want to raise them in a bubble. We don't want that, you know, where they don't get out and know what's going on in the world, but there is that delicate balance between, um, protecting their hearts, guiding them, and yet exposing them to what's out there. And, and I want my kids to have a variety of friends. I want them to be connected to all kinds of people, but kind of coaching them through that. And, and that's something again, where just no formula. It's, it's really about relationship. There's no shortcut for a relationship with your kids. It takes time. It takes intentionality. And uh, that's just something we have to put. It's so worth it though. Mm-hmm. So worth it. Um, Before we move on, Monica, can you talk to the mom whose son, I mean, she's tried, she's Mm. tried to have the faith conversations, to take him to church, to do all the things and he's Mm -hmm. 15 or however old he is. And um, she's tried to speak identity over him. um, And it just doesn't seem to have stuck. Mm. Can you speak to her for a second? You bet. Yes. I hear from a lot of moms in that position. And I think the first thing I want to say is, is all grace abounds to all of us. Um, And just for the mom herself, because oftentimes when I hear from these moms, there is an element of they're, they're asking where they've gone wrong, what they've done wrong. And I just don't think that that's helpful. I think that none of us have done a perfect job. God's grace is behind any good that's come of my boys, I know. And so to just recognize that we live in a fallen world and that God has a different story for each of our children. No two stories will be alike. There's not not one right way. But um, also to not give up, to not give up hope. Um, I think that for you to receive God's grace and to know that he sees every effort. He sees everything you've done and he's pleased and that this isn't about you. (laughs) This is, you know, your child again has a free will and God is going to do things in his timing. But in the meantime, I just encourage parents not to just throw up your hands and be like, well, they've chosen, they're done. Because I believe that all the way up until their early adult years, that there's, their story is still being written. And so probably stepping back and just asking, what can my role be right now? They're not eight anymore. They're 15 or they're 18. What is my role now? Where do I have control and where do I not? And then just accepting that and knowing um, that you can only do so much. And and at the end of the day, you want to sleep well, knowing you've done your best. It's not about results. There's not a formula for how the kids turn out. There may be um, great help, you know, in scripture, great help out there for how to parent well, but the results are not up to us. So just being prayerful and receiving God's grace and then continuing to pray, continuing to ask questions, look around, see where maybe there's something you haven't thought of that could come into your child's life that could be, you know, whether it's the camp experience or the book or that one conversation, always be looking. But I think holding loosely to the results is key. You cannot feel like you are in control of the results because none of us are. And, you know, even for my own kids, I say, I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. I have an 11 year old, I have an 18 year old, any of them could make a choice tomorrow, next week. I'm, I'm not preaching from a place of this is all about how they're going to turn out. It's what can we do as parents to do our very, very best. And then uh, the results are between them and God only. And, and the results may come when they're middle age, you may not know for many, many years, the difference you're making by being consistent and loving and faithful. Your prayers may be answered much later. And we all just need to hold on to that hope. Um, and, and try to just keep living your own life. Try not to put your identity on your kids and how they're doing. I think it's super important that we continue to take care of ourselves. We do what we can, and then we have to move on and, and also take care of ourselves and keep living our best life too. 
Well, that gets back to the modeling, right? Of mm. that you talked about earlier. Um, yeah. If we're modeling a faithful life and modeling where we get our identity and it's not in exactly. them and not in their mistakes, then they're going to um, have a better sense of how to move forward in their own choices or yes. their own consequences. Yes, definitely. And, and allowing them to face the consequences. I think that's really mm-hmm. hard for us parents is, is letting the consequences do the teaching. Sometimes the best thing we can do is to just step back and let them fall. <laughs> and, you know, try not to say, I told you so, just keep loving them. But yeah, consequences are very helpful. We need to, we need to do a better job of letting them teach. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's hard. I think it to is. tell moms, you know, we know the three of us know that it's hard to let our kids experience those consequences. Mm. And yet sometimes yeah. life is a better teacher than mom is, yes. even though we think that mom is uh-huh. the best teacher because mm-hmm. yeah, we're yeah. trying to protect them. Yes. I was just thinking about, as you were talking, how it's so important for us to stay rooted in our faith and in not neglecting our time with the Lord. I think sometimes when we're really stressed Mm -hmm. about our kids or a situation, we spin in that instead of spinning in the word of God. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. I know even for Lent, I gave up worry and it really has brought to mind Mm -hmm. how often I'm unintentionally worrying about something. And I'm like, wait a minute, I'm worrying right now. And I'm like, I can't be, I'm in Lent. I can't be, but, but it actually (laughs) has been really good for me to recognize how often my brain is just going to worry Mm -hmm. instead of faith Mm -hmm. and instead of trust. And the only way that I have that is really making sure that I'm spending that time in scripture, in prayer before God, turning those cares over to him. And Yeah. So that's, I I was just thinking about that as you were talking. Well, yeah. And you were just mentioning habit a minute ago and all of these things worry, all the thoughts can be such a habit as well. And I think that we need to recognize where we need to break some habits that are mental. Like, yeah. Amen to that. Well, Monica, as we're finishing up today, do you have any mantras or sayings that you come back to again and again when it comes to raising boys? Oh, we have a lot that are probably not super profound, but that just seem to come up. Um, You know, we like to tell our 11 year old that Swansons do hard things, you know, sometimes just doing hard things. And and we joke that he's happy to do hard things physically, but when it comes to doing a, you know, a pile of dishes in the sink, that's, that's like <laughs> the hardest Mount thing. Everest. And so yes, yes. And so um Swansons do hard things. I mean, a lot of ours are just silly, more like sports related or boys, you know, go big or go home. We do a lot of just inspirational. Um certainly with freedom comes responsibility. I remind my boys of that one a lot, especially as they want more freedom. It's like then show me how responsible you are, and there's a good chance you're gonna get more freedom. Uh have to ponder that. I might think of more. I can say okay, we'll put more in the show it. notes. If you think of some really yes. good ones you want to share again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Monica, we've been thank working you. On our family. Oh, I was just going to say, we've been working on our family mission statement. Cause I've been talking about that for, and uh, I think it's really fun to hear from other families and what they use for their mission statement or a creed or something like that. And so it's been fun to have these conversations with our boys and ask them what what they think of when they think of the Swansons. And it's kind of fun to ask your kids those questions and hear what comes up, things that you didn't realize um, have kind of formed over time. So it's been really fun. Yeah, it's so good. I love that, Mm. Monica. Well, thank you. We just love you. You do such (laughs) a great job of spreading wisdom in the world. And Mm. we're thankful that you were doing that with us today on the topic of raising boys. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's always a joy to talk to you guys.